you are watching Redicon. Hello everyone, welcome to Lumber Spine MRI session on Redicon. This presentation is divided into seven parts. Indications as in why we do it, protocols to discuss how do we do it, layout is when we will see how to display the images also known as hanging protocols or display protocols, interpretation of findings, checklist to ensure not to miss anything and finally what information to display in a report. The last part of this presentation will be different cases. Indications of back pain are numerous and exhausting. From benign causes to red flag signs, use of MRI for back pain is more prevalent than ever. I have always believed that it is better to investigate more than describing wrong treatment. Lumbar spine MRIs can be 25-30% to 30 of MRI in any radiology department. Means if you can learn this well, you can do quarter of MRI work output safely, precisely and accurately. It is important to review the clinical information as it can give you valuable insight to important areas of scan especially in the cases of radiculopathy. In most centers across the world, lumbar spine MRI has become a routine investigation which has kept scanners busy. So it is more important than ever to review the request and ensure that more urgent or emergent requests in particular with malignancy are not missed and these are not overlooked or delayed. Also, there is an academic benefit of reviewing all requests that you can differentiate between radiculopathy versus back pain as these two can have very different causes and very different management plan as well. An important question is what sequences should I perform? My own departmental routine is two axials and two sagittals. Two axials will be T1 and T2 and two sagittals will also be T1 and T2 in routine cases. In trauma patients, we add sagittal star as it is more sensitive for otherwise occult bony injury, in particular and plate compressions. Also, post contrast images for the cases with previous or recent surgery, infections and masses. You can also consider doing DWI or diffusion weighted imaging for suspected ischitis when we can give contrast as discussed later in this talk. If you are struggling with a claustrophobic patient or someone who cannot tolerate MRI well due to pain, then you can drop axial T1 images as well as it is not always required. Some centers regularly do three sequences of two sagittals and one axial T2. If I have to give one tip to beginners for MRI lumbar spine, I would suggest that please spend time on the layout. You must be very consistent on how you display your images. It will give you great insight into sequences, their limitations and awareness of subtle changes in appearances on different pathologies. I always put my sagittal T1 and T2 sequences on the left side of the screen, side by side, and axial images on the right side of the screen. It allows me an initial survey of the spine on sagittal images, and later I would use the same display for the disc analysis at each level. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the notification bell for new courses. For more modules and radiology CMAs, please visit www.radicon.org.